Hello, my name is David, and this animated short film only took me 10 days. Well, not really. Lovecraftian horror is often labelled as cosmic horror, or the horror of the unknown. I really like this stuff. I find the man himself, H.P. Lovecraft, extremely fascinating. He had a very interesting life. I find his work obviously fascinating, and all the stuff inspired by his work extremely fascinating as well. Even if you've never read any of Lovecraft's work, you have experienced Lovecraftian horror. His influence is everywhere, especially in the sci-fi horror genre. I approached making this short film like I would making a fan film. I based this film around the aspects of Lovecraft's work I personally find the most compelling. Lovecraft's work likes to focus a lot on how insignificant we are, how ignorant we are of the vastness of the universe. It's, it's often extremely nihilistic. Nothing matters, we don't matter, we are tiny and insignificant in an indifferent universe. His work often focuses on the limits of human comprehension, and that specifically, among a lot of other things, but that specifically is what I love in his stuff. The man himself, H.P. Lovecraft, was a very depressed, very shut-in man. He was xenophobic, he was racist, he thought he was a monster, he thought he was an ugly freak to be shut away. He, he died at 46 of cancer and no one acknowledged the importance or significance of his work until after his death. There's a reason my short film about a metaphorical man stuck in a room, refusing to go outside doodling Cthulhu on his walls, looks a tad like Howard Phillips Lovecraft himself. As I animate, I consume a stupendous amount of podcasts and audiobooks. For White Walls specifically, I listen to the complete fiction of H.P. Lovecraft audiobook by the H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society, which is 52 hours long. Originally my plan was to finish it and then start listening to, to work inspired by Lovecraft's work, things like the mist. But after I was finished, I just went back and listened to a few of my favourites. I really, really like this stuff. But this short film isn't based on any specific Lovecraft story. Instead, I set out to make a short film within the Lovecraft mythos about what I consider bare bones Lovecraftian horror. It's a very simple premise. The, this short film is literally just about a man who finds a statue of Cthulhu and then goes mad, and that's it. The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all of its contents. Is a quote from H.P. Lovecraft, and I think it encapsulates what this short film's about very, very well. If I based this short film on any specific work of his, it would have to be that quote. There's a reason the sketchbook I made for this short film opens with that exact quote. This film isn't actually about a white wall, or a room, or seeing the outdoors for the first time, it's all a metaphor. Plato's allegory of the cave. Imagine living your whole life in one room, assuming that's all the world was. You wouldn't know any better, and you'd likely be completely happy with that. And then imagine seeing the outdoors for the first time after all of that, and its limitless possibilities. You wouldn't even be able to comprehend what you were seeing. The small room and the white wall are a metaphor for the limits of human understanding, the, the comfort of sanity, our ignorance of the vastness of the universe. The outdoors is the universe and its terrifying enormity. If that door opens and you catch a glimpse of the outside, a world so much larger and so much more colourful and so much more terrifying and indescribable than you could possibly conceive, of, of, of course you're going to go completely mad, especially if that door then closes and you're trapped back within the confines of human limitation. To me, that's what Lovecraftian horror is. The reason this short film is told in such a way is to put the impossible into perspective. The film is about seeing and comprehending something so far beyond your capabilities of understanding, and I truly don't believe anyone can depict the impossible in a film. It all has to be put into perspective, a way us humans can actually understand. There's a reason this film starts with the line, imagine a man and not there was a man. 90% of this short film is presented in metaphor. 
If you want to be technical, the, the only parts of the short film that are real are in grayscale. Everything else, everything sepia tone, is, is a metaphorical explanation of events. So if you want to take out every single sepia shot in this whole short film, the short film ends up being about three men on an expedition, and they find the Cyclopean ruins of an ancient civilization and catch a glimpse of an ancient statue of Cthulhu, and the sheer concept of such a cosmic and impossible being, and the civilization that worshipped said being as a, as a god, drives the man to insanity. He's driven to recreate the image of Cthulhu over and over again, killing his two friends and mutilating his own body, recreating a life sculpture of the Great Old One. That's what happens in this short film, but it's not what the short film's about. The short film's about seeing and conceiving something completely beyond your capabilities of comprehension. What we see in this short film is not Cthulhu. It's a statue of Cthulhu, it's a depiction of Cthulhu. Originally in the script, instead of seeing a statue, the man saw Cthulhu in the flesh. But that really didn't sit with me right. Goes back to my earlier point, how do you show something that's supposed to be unshowable and impossible? This short film's about seeing something that's impossible, and you can't show something that's impossible. It, it, it's, a, it's an issue with a lot of monsters in Lovecraftian fiction. They're often so grotesque and alien, and so far beyond our capabilities of understanding, and it's impossible to describe or comprehend. When you design that and, and show an audience a monster, it's no longer impossible. You can see it. And, and if that design doesn't drive people insane and isn't like anything of this earth, real or imagined, you designed it wrong. It's, it's a really hard thing to translate from a written word to a drawing or a film. Theoretically, impossible to translate. I prefer the ambiguity of a man finding the statue of Cthulhu and the implied ancient civilization that worshipped this enormous cosmic being because I feel it makes a little bit more sense for the story I was trying to tell. The character in the film does not see the real Cthulhu, he sees a glimpse, a depiction. He then proceeds to recreate that image over and over. He's drawing Cthulhu, he's mutilating his own body, turning himself into a sculpture of Cthulhu, for he's never actually seen Cthulhu. He only saw a glimpse, a statue through a door, which was then shut. It seemed more appropriate. It's frustrating for the character in the short film in a similar way that it's frustrating for me because I'm an artist who loves monsters and monster design specifically, and I want to design a Cthulhu. I made a clay sculpture of the Great Old One while working on this short film, but this was never supposed to be the final design. This was just something I made uh, to keep my Lovecraftian creative juices flowing while working on my sketchbook for this short film. I started a full design process for what I wanted Cthulhu to look like, and I wanted to design my interpretation of him in the same way I designed the monsters for my animated short film Merry Madness, where I do research, I draw pictures, I make a sculpture, and then make a 3D model to animate. I started this process, I, I started researching, started going to museums for reference, and I started drawing and designing. I, I even started sculpting the final design for the film, but like I mentioned, at a certain point I realised a non-final design is probably more appropriate. So, so I stopped sculpting. And there Cthulhu lies. An unfinished, blobby Squidward. My condolences for your condition. When I finally needed a design for the statue in the film, I decided to just take pictures of the sculpture I made and trace them. This non-final clay sculpture I made ended up being the exact non-final sculpture of Cthulhu featured in the film itself, which was never the intention, but I'm glad it worked out that way. I really like it when my sculptures manage to interweave within my short films, because my two, the two things I enjoy probably most are sculpting and filmmaking, and it's really nice to just have them, them marry in the middle. I animated this film in just 10 days, which is the quickest I've ever produced a film. The whole film took 25 days in all, from having literally nothing, to having a full sketchbook full of drawings, an animated short film, a sculpture and a sad Squidward. I spent the first 10 days on 
my sketchbook and making one and a half sculptures. I spent the next 10 days animating 3D modeling and rendering, which is usually the longest part, taking months. And I spent the last five days editing, color correcting, and sound mixing. I wrote this film nearly a year ago with no intention of making an animated short film out of it. I actually wrote this film with the intention of making it into a live action short film, hence why it's so small scale and takes place nearly entirely in one room. When I decided to challenge myself to finish a film in just 10 days, I looked through a pile of old scripts and this one was the easiest one to do. I made a lot of changes to the way I work for this short film because there was no way that with my usual process this would be possible in just 10 days. For example, I'm going to put it as simply as possible. My usual process for creating a very basic shot, like this one from Merry Madness, is to animate the characters in empty space in Blender, render out a single frame, take that rendered frame into Photoshop, draw the backdrop, and then go back into Blender and place that backdrop behind the characters and render the shot. Drawing every single backdrop is by far the most time-consuming part of my, of my filmmaking process. I do this for every single shot, which usually means drawing 40 to 75 backdrops per film. I have hundreds, if not thousands, of, of drawings of forests and walls and caves and cities and towns and living rooms, and I draw all of these one at a time, all from scratch. The biggest change to this short film, and the reason I could finish all the animation in just 10 days, is because it takes place nearly entirely in one room, and I 3D modelled that bloody room. I basically use the same process, animate the character, render it a single frame, draw the backdrop and place it behind him again, but now, when I render out that frame, there isn't just blank space behind the character, 85% of the backdrop is already drawn out for me. I just need to add a few details here and there and then drop it back in. Because of this massive quality of life change, I could work a lot faster and on the stuff I actually enjoy about animation. I think with less time spent drawing the same room from 55 different angles, and more time spent on actually puppeteering the model, this has turned out to be some of my best character animation to date. I spent maybe 5 to 8 hours a day on this for 10 days and I never felt overworked or rushed. I mean, the 52 hours worth of Lovecraft audiobook really helped. But usually, these things take an average of 3 to 5 or 6 months and also a whole wedge out of my soul. This was quite relaxing. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that this short film was a test, a challenge to see how efficiently I could finish a film, changing up my workflow and how I animate. I've been gone for like three months now, and this short film didn't take very long to make, so you can probably assume this isn't all I've been working on. This was a technical trial run for a bigger series of films I've also been working on. If you're a Patreon supporter, you've known about this for a while, but I think it's about time I gave the rest of you guys a, a teaser of the other, bigger project I've been working on. Hello, citizens of Autodale, and welcome to tonight's PSA. Regular updates on that over on my Patreon page. Also, if you want to read this whole sketchbook, the sketchbook I've been showing for this project, my White Walls sketchbook, high resolution photographs of the entire book have just been uploaded to my Patreon page as well. Thank you so much for watching, and more updates on Autodale soon. Bye guys.